Hi, I'm Steve with Nebraska Star Beef. Today we're going to talk a little bit about aging beef, kind of break down the three different types that are common in the beef industry today. Uh, dry aging, hanger aging, and wet aging. So if that's something that sounds like it might be interesting to you, keep watching. We're going to dive in. What is aging? Aging is the process that occurs naturally within meat. There's, there's enzymes that, it, that are in the muscle tissue. And aging is just a matter of giving them a little bit of time to start breaking down the muscle to make the meat more tender. And the, the logic is the same, whether it's dry aging, wet aging, hanger aging. The, the goal is the same, and that is to make meat more tender and more delicious. Dry aging is a process that is as old as humanity. And modern day dry aging has become very precise with industrial refrigeration or even, even home refrigeration where temperature, humidity, and airflow can all be very well managed. The process of dry aging involves taking a, a piece of meat called a primal or the, the large almost loaf of meat that the steaks will be cut from, placing that in an environment where the temperature, humidity, and airflow are all controlled very precisely. And then that meat is left there for a period of time which can be easily up to 120 days for those enzymes in the meat to begin to break things down and make that meat more tender. What happens is evaporation. There, there's a significant amount of evaporative loss in dry aging, can be up to 30%. The meat will also develop a rind or a pellicle that needs to be trimmed as the steaks are cut. So the yield loss on dry aging is, is very high. There's a lot of loss in dry aging but it results in a product that's very good and people who develop a taste for dry aged beef that's it, it's it's very unique what is hanger aging hanger aging is the process of leaving the halves of beef on a hanger to age typically between 21 and 28 days it can still be found at a lot of smaller butcher shops. Um, larger beef typically does not do this because they're interested in moving product through the coolers. Um, so hanger aging is typically found in smaller uh, custom packing houses and places like that. It's a very, very good process. It kind of, uh, kind of lands somewhere in between wet aging and dry aging. Uh, and basically it's just leaving the halves of beef on the hanger in a refrigerated in the refrigeration humidity airflow all of these things need to be managed very well in hanger aged beef but uh, typically between 21 and 28 days will yield a very very good product um, if you can get hanger aged beef it's a good way to go at aging is the most common type of aging in the beef world today and wet aging is something that's typically done with beef that comes from larger and, and a lot of smaller packers. As the carcasses broke into the primals or the kind of a loaf of meat that the steaks are cut from, those packer bags are left at a specific temperature, typically around 30 degrees Fahrenheit for a specific amount of time to age. At Nebraska Star Beef, we wet age everything 35 days. Wet aging can differ from that based on the producer. Uh, typically your fresh programs like grocery stores and places like that, they may say meat's wet aged. Typically that's gonna be less than two weeks because they need to keep that fresh product moving across the counter. Uh, programs like Nebraska Star Beef where we wet age 35 days, cut steaks, package, and then freeze. That's one of the secrets to our consistency is the consistency of that process. 
and then freezing to lock those steaks in at a state of perfection. Wet aging has some advantages over dry aging and hanger aging in that there's very little yield loss. Uh, there's no, no pellicle forms, there's no need for excessive trimming, uh, there's no evaporative loss because the, in the wet aging process, the beef stays in the packer bag that it goes into when it comes off the carcass. So it's a very efficient form of aging. It's a very effective form of aging. You don't get quite the uh, highly developed taste that you get in dry aged beef. Dry aged beef has a, a very unique taste and, and most people have to develop a taste for dry aged beef. Wet aged beef is a type of beef, it's a type of aging that virtually everybody's going to enjoy. It's a more tender steak, the flavor's outstanding. Wet aging's just hard to beat. Okay, so a lot of people, a lot of you guys might be sitting there thinking, holy cow, we're going to take a chunk of beef and we're going to put it in some kind of refrigerator for up to 120 days. We'll talk about dry aging a little bit. How does that meat not spoil. And regardless of the aging type, the one common denominator to safe aging is temperature, humidity, and airflow. In wet aging, the airflow is not as critical and humidity is not as critical, but the temperature is. And all of these processes are happening at a very low temperature. The, the goal is for the enzymes inside the meat to begin to break the meat down to make it more tender. Now, that doesn't mean the beef is spoiling, okay? And any of the beef that's been USDA certified, any of the beef that we sell is coming from a federally inspected USDA uh, facility, that beef is determined safe. Cheese has been aged since forever. The aging process is very safe as long as it's done properly and to age beef properly, the temperature, humidity, and airflow all have to be managed very well. Can beef spoil? It sure can. But if you do it right, aging is absolutely safe and it is absolutely a benefit to the finished product. End of the day, wet aging is just impossible to beat. Uh, especially from a production perspective. When we're talking about putting out a consistent steak product, shipping hundreds of orders a week, um, wet aging is the best way to make the most consistent product and make enough of it to take care of demand. I played around with dry aging quite a bit. Um, it's fun, it's cool. Um, from a being in the steak business perspective, it's a bit of a novelty because it would be hard to keep up with demand. Now there are places that do it, restaurants, uh, plenty of people doing that kind of thing. But again, the scale of economy is what makes dry aging difficult. Uh, hanger aging, man, any time I can get some good hanger aged beef, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna discriminate. It's a really, really good, good way to go. Again, the scale of economy gets a little tricky keeping up with a lot of, a lot of volume moving. Uh, but at the end of the day, wet aging, very little yield loss, results in a great product that's very, very consistent. Wet aging all day. Well, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. We appreciate having you here. Uh, somewhere down here, there's like a, a like and subscribe button. If, if you're inclined, please give those a click. Um, we hope this has answered some questions about aging beef. If you have more questions, drop them in the comments. We watch the comments. We would, we would love to have some more dialogue on the topic. If there's you know, questions, comments, concerns, uh, ideas, input, anything you've got, drop them down in the comments and uh, you'll definitely be hearing from us. Thanks again for sticking around. I uh, look forward to seeing you next week.